The power of the Holy Ghost comes upon an individual for them to walk in honor towards God. For them to recognize that the Lord is a soul for them to sow into. That's the power of the Lord that does that. It's actually an anointing that comes on you to recognize that the Father wants you to invest your money into him, his work, his mission, his profit, his teachings. It is the spirit of God at work. God supplies the spirit to the sower so that they'll sow. This is all the working of God. I think that's Acts chapter 20, verse 35, that said that King Jesus said, remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that it's more blessed to give than to receive. When I started off sowing, I started off sowing aggressively, vigilant, uh, vigilantly. Uh, I started sowing strategically. I made a lot of sacrifices. At that time, I didn't wear no jewelry. At that time, I didn't have a lot of things that I have today. I pit off those things because I understood that there was an altar that I was on earth to build for my father in heaven. Many people come to this earth not knowing that it is an urgency to build your altar. My little daughter Zendaya Glory Holmes is a sower. If I give her anything, she sow it back to me. She trained. I'm teaching her early and she only three years old and she understand about the seed principle. She understand that daddy is rewarding her according to her sowing. Teaching her the kingdom system so that she won't be ungrateful, disrespectful, so that she won't have um, any um, ungratefulness in her. I'm teaching her early. I'm teaching her how to respect God. Some of you are, you, you, you grew up disrespectful. You're still disrespectful today. You do stuff that the spirit didn't instruct you to do. You get yourself in trouble. Then you up there pray and ask him to deliver you. And he ain't tell you to do none of the stuff that you did. Don't wait until you get into calamity and destruction to call on God. Call on God when nothing is wrong. See, some of y'all, you got sickness in your body. You got stuff going on in your body. But saints, I act like I'm a sick person when I go to God. And I'm whole. I ain't got no sickness. I ain't got no diseases. But I go to the Father as if I'm sick because I pull on his grace for health. I pull on his strategy. Saints, health, it comes from God. But see, he'll teach you how to eat, how to drink water, how to rest, how to do all that stuff. He teach you that, but that's not health. Health is really God being able to direct you with your body. The same way wealth is not just having a lot of money. Wealth is having the Holy Ghost being able to instruct you about what to do with money. God ain't trying to make you rich just because you want to be rich. God not trying to make nobody wealthy just because you want wealth. He want to pit wealth and riches in the house of somebody that fears him. When you fear God, you yield to his wisdom. What Romans 6.13 say, yield yourself to God. As those alive from the dead and your members as instruments, as servants, as in, uh, 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 servants of righteousness.
Psalm 112, that text is so powerful, and I've experienced this. It says, blessed is the man that delighteth in the Lord, that fear, that fear the Lord, that delight greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty on the earth. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, Psalm 112. Psalm 1, uh, 112, verse 2, just now. Psalm 112, verse 1. Blessed is that man that feared the Lord, delight greatly in his commandments. Psalm 112, verse 3. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Why is wealth and riches in his house? Because this man is in fear of God. That means that he does not disobey God's desires. When God wants something, he is the supply system to God. If God say, I want something to be done in the earth, that man will sow what he got. If God says, I want praise, that man going to praise God. He is in tune with what the father wants. That's why God makes him rich. There's many people talking about God promised me a house. For what? What he promised you a house for? So that you can let your ungodly children come there and do what they want? So that you can let your ungodly family come there, y'all do what y'all want, so that you could carry on your own activities in that house? God not giving you a house for you to rebel against him in the house. The same way God not giving you a car so that you could just drive everybody in there or listen to what you want in there, but that you'll have the Holy Spirit governing the atmosphere of that car. The quickest way into wealth is submission. That means that there is a mission that got all the money that God want to give you in it. People go to the left and to the right when Matthew chapter 7. It told you that enter into that straight gate. People want to go all, all over the place, do what they want, when they want. Then they want God to bless them. When Deuteronomy 28 says, the blessing will overtake those that hearken diligently to my voice. That means that they are hungry for me to speak to them. They're hungry for me to talk to them. They're hungry for, 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 for their members to glorify me, their body to do what I say. Legion wanted to go with Jesus and Jesus told Legion, you stay your behind here. So what if Legion would have went over where Jesus was in another place? He would have went to hell, even though Jesus right there. Because that's not his instruction. Stay your behind Legion where I pitch you. You're not going to get blessed doing your own thing. You get blessed because you're listening to instructions. Proverbs 13, 18 says that poverty and shame shall be to him that refuse instruction. And it says that he that regardeth reproof, he shall be honored. Proverbs 13, 18. It tells you if you listen to reproof. If you let God rebuke you, if you let God tell you what he wants from you and you surrender to what he reveals to you, that's what he said he going to honor you. He not going to honor you because you force yourself on him. He not going to honor you because you make risky steps in your life and do what you think is best for you. He not going to honor you. You going to do all that stuff in vain. The only way that you get blessed is because you humbled yourself to listen to the word of the living God. If you don't humble yourself to listen to the word of the living God, it don't matter what sacrifice you make. It don't matter how far you travel. It don't matter where you go, what you do, what you say. It's not going to land you into the destiny that God has for you. The only way you're going to enter into the destiny is if you humble yourself and if you follow instructions and if you seek God with all of your might and all of your heart and you search for him with all of your being, that's the only way you're going to live in the blessing. 
Many people want to live in the blessing, but you're not of the blessing if you got a rebellious spirit. You're not of the blessing if you got your self-centered nature still operating over you. You're not in the blessing if you do what you want, when you want, how you want, where you want, say what you want. You're not in the blessing. The blessing is a place where you're strictly listening to the voice of the Holy Ghost. You follow the Holy Ghost and you don't make no move that the Holy Ghost didn't call you to make. When you live in the blessing, you're not sneaky or crafty. You're accountable to the Father. You ask him about your footsteps. The Holy Ghost is not going to bless you because you up there taking risks. Some of y'all taking risks right now talking about, I hope the Lord bless me. The Lord ain't going to bless you. Taking no risks. He only blessing his instruction being followed. After Saul didn't do what God said, Saul said, let me offer up a seed unto God. Samuel said, no, God already said what he had wanted. Yes, God loved the seed, but he don't love your seed because what you were supposed to do, you didn't do it. What am I saying? I'm telling you, the prophet is right here telling you that there is a way that seemeth right to a man. The end thereof is death. There are things that you do in your own form of godliness that is actually the rejection of the true power of God. And the power of God is where he's able to teach you. 1 John 2.27, 1 John 2.20 said that you got anointed from the Holy One and he teach you all things. You know all things. The Holy Spirit not going to bless a bastard spirit. Walking by faith is not walking aimlessly. Walking by faith actually means that the word of the Lord came to you and now you are acting upon the word of the Lord that came to you. It's not just you walking aimlessly. People have made walking by faith mean I don't really know what's going to happen. No, no, no. When you're walking by faith, that means that you actually heard the word come to you. Because Romans 10, 17 said that faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So if you got faith, you're walking by faith, that means that you're walking by a word that God has spoke to you. You heard him say, so you're not walking aimlessly. Walking by faith actually means that you're remembering what God spoke to you and you're refusing to divert from the path to get it. Some of y'all, you're living in your life doing a lot of sacrifices that's not going to be rewarded. Because you didn't humble yourself and find out the will of God. You want to step out and walk in the flesh, do the flesh, walk in your own fleshly ways, and then you want God to send you the blessing. He not going to do that. Who bewitch you? Pastor Paul said you began in the spirit. Now you seek to be perfected in the flesh. Who bewitch you? God don't go. He not going to bless no disorder and disobedience. The reason why you go through a process with the father where he has you take up your cross and follow him is because he's showing you the nature in which he wants you to live out of when he does bless you with manifestation. Because if you up there doing your own thing before you even got the manifestation of riches, think about what you're going to do with the riches. You're going to be a terrorist. Saints, if you don't follow God, when you ain't even got a lot of money, what you think going to happen when you get a lot of money? What you think going to happen? The more money you have, you actually have more temptation because you have more leverage to do things that the average person can't do. And since I look at my life, I often laugh at people. They broke, but they got so much things that they trying to do. And me, I often look at people and see the foolishness of man. Somebody got $20,000. They want to go on a trip, a vacation. They want to do everything. A sower get $20,000 and they listening to the Holy Ghost. 
the difference. If you give a, a natural man a million dollars, you know what he going to do? He going to find a million things that he need to do now. Now, he didn't have a million dollars, but now he got a million dollars. He got a million needs all of a sudden, all of a sudden, mind you, he didn't have no needs. He didn't have no way to pay for all these needs, but now he got the million. Now he got needs. Now he got plans for the million, not knowing that the million dollars is a test. I'm going to tell you like this. The father is the best person you can sow into. In life, we pick people to sow into, then people don't even be there. Years later, the Holy Ghost be the one right there by your side. I'm going to talk to you rough on here. Some of y'all need to know this. I know I got people right here. Some of y'all parents, some of y'all, listen, listen to the Holy Ghost with your money. Some of y'all be up there paying for your child's soccer, paying for all that basketball, doing all that different type of stuff. Yeah, because you think they're going to make you rich. Don't lie, parents. Some of y'all be actually pitting inside of your mind. My child going to make me rich. Listen to God with your money. That's, that's what I'm really saying. That's what I'm really saying. That's what I'm really saying. Listen to God with your money because it's going to be God going to be with you at the end of the day. If the devil fill your child heart, fill your wife heart, fill your husband heart, fill your, your, your children heart, it's going to be the Holy Ghost right there by your side. So listen to the Holy Ghost today. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 2 says, give a portion of seven, give a portion of eight, for you know not what evil shall be upon the earth. Those of y'all in my ministry, remember I told you that the Lord said that Ecclesiastes 11 was an end time scripture. That was years ago. That was like 2017. Remember I told you a word of the Lord came to me and told me that Ecclesiastes 11 was an end time scripture. And I, I remember I was teaching you, I was telling you that evil days will come on this earth and your sowing today. Is going to preserve you from the evil. Psalm 121 says that he shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your coming in and going out. The sun won't be able to strike you. He'll preserve you. He said that in Psalm 121. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 2 said, give a portion of seven. Give a portion of eight. Because you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. See what the Holy Spirit did with the seed principle is that he, he created the seed principle to build a supernatural wall around you. So, so when you get money into your hands, money come into your hands. If you say, Lord, I'm going to bless the man of God that you have sent to teach me and to deliver my soul from evil. I'm going to bless him because that's how you give to God. You can't give to God and throw money up in the air. It's going to come right back down. If you have that type of mindset, you know what the Lord does? He multiplies your seed sown. That's what 2 Corinthians 9 says. It's the kingdom system. Now, saints, you need this money to live on earth. You need this money to have a car. You need this money to have a place to live. You need this money to eat food. And some of you are up there with your religious self always talking about, oh, I don't need no money. That's not important. Yeah, but if you think that is not important for you, there's somebody on earth that God could use you to be generous to and to share with them because you got so much of it because you have obeyed God. Sowing is a divine grace that God works through 
so that your inheritance of riches and wealth can get to you. Psalm chapter 66, verse 12 says that you have let man ride over our head, but thou hast brought us into a wealthy place. Psalm 66, verse 12 is dealing with God bringing you into a wealthy place. The wealthy place is off of the kingdom system. Genesis chapter 12. How did Abram respond to God? The Bible said he built an altar. Many people going to tell you that they got the blessing of Abraham on them. Ask them if they are living like Abraham lived. You say, prophet, what that mean? Do I ask them if they're rich? No, 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 no. Ask them if they sow. Have they built an altar to worship God with their provision? Many people you meet, they'll tell you, oh, I'm blessed. I'm highly favored of the Lord. If you highly favored, how are you not a high sower? So you mean that God is investing much into you and to whom much is given, much is required, but God can't get nothing out of you? He can't require nothing from you? It sounds like a thief to me. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 says in verse 4, if you observe the wind, you will not sow. If you regard the clouds, you will not reap. Ecclesiastes 11 verse 5 says that as you don't know the way of the spirit, nor do you know how bones grow in the womb of a mother that's with child. So you don't know. You don't know. The way that God is going to give you that harvest, God that maketh all, you don't know his way. You don't know how he going to multiply that seed. You don't know how he going to use that seed to bless you, prosper you, deliver you. You don't know. That's what the word says. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 5. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 6 says, sow your seed in the morning. So you withhold not your hand in the evening because you don't know which seed is going to prosper, whether this one or that one or both of them alike. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 7. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 6, rather. Ecclesiastes 11, 6. Said in the morning, uh, sow your seed. In the morning, sow your seed. And in the evening, withhold not thy hand. Because you don't know which seed is going to prosper, either this or that, or both of them alike. That means to stay in the sowing flow. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. Proverbs 10, 4 says that he that dealeth with a slack hand shall be poor, but the hand of the diligent shall be made rich. It says that if a man is diligent with his hands, that means that he working, he praising, he sowing, that man shall be rich. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. The Bible talking about sowing. Proverbs 3, 9 says you honor the Lord with your money. That's how you honor him. Genesis chapter 12, Abram built an altar unto God and he remembered God and he sold his way out. So how could you say Galatians chapter 3 verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made uh, cursed for us for it is written, cursed is he that hangeth upon a tree. Uh, Galatians 3 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us and that we might receive the promise of the spirit. How could you live in Galatians 3.14 and say that the blessing of Abraham has come upon you and you haven't done what Abraham does? The blessing of Abraham is an anointing to live out the same pattern of making our altar unto God like Abraham did. In Genesis chapter 8, verse 20 through 22, Noah builds an altar and he starts sowing unto God. I think that's Genesis 8, 21, where God starts smelling the seed. God said, no, no more will I curse the ground for man's sake. It's Acts chapter 26, where Isaac is now sowing his way out and he forgot to sow, which happens so many times when you're a believer. You forget to sow. You're talking about you love God, I praise God, I believe in God. And God, you every money that you get, you won't even honor God's teaching, his word being preached, you don't honor it. And then if you do honor it, you want to sow a little $10, but you want to pay for your hair, your hair over 800, 700, 500, 400, 300, 200. 
Some of y'all twenty dollars, ten dollars, you know. It depends, it depends. Some of y'all twenty dollars, ten dollars. If you got that raccoon do, if you got that raccoon do, if you got that you got that mascot, mascot weave, you know, that mascot weave, it probably ten, twenty dollars. That's different, that's different. Some of y'all pay more for cigarette than you have paid into the kingdom. Some of y'all paid for weed more than you paid into the kingdom. Some of y'all done paid for light bills, for houses you don't even live in no more. Apartments you don't even live in no more, more than seed. Some of y'all done paid for people that not even in your life no more, more than seed. And money always moving, but moving in the wrong direction. And then when you ain't got no money, now you come into God, asking God to show you some help, give you deliverance. But what you don't see is God been placing ministering seed to your hand and you've been robbing the seed. Saints, if you rob God of the seed, you permit your need. Because God gave you that seed because God could see further than you. The Lord be seeing the trouble that's up, up, uh, up ahead. God be seeing calamity in the future. See, some of you are what you live your whole life in the now, looking at the now. Remember I said 2 Corinthians 4.18? For while we don't look at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen, because the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are eternal. And some of you all don't know the eternal matters of your life on earth. You don't know what's planned up against you in the future. And saints, you know what Satan does? When you don't live a life of honoring God with money, you still go use that money on dumb stuff. You still got to use that money on tickets. You still got to use that money on stuff that's not going to avail to nothing in the future. So when you don't sow that money, you still end up in debt to something where that money leaves your hand anyway. But now, instead of you giving God pleasure, you honoring your, your creator and you showing him your trust and giving him a pleasurable experience with your true worship. Now you have just planted that money back into Satan's kingdom. Pride don't let you abide in the seed. And God gives you a measure of faith so that you could also sow. He gives you a measure of faith so that you could discover that you was created to take care of God, to sow into God, to bless God, and to prosper God. You reap what you sow. That's what Galatians 6 say. You reap what you sow. So you actually have to bless God before God can bless you. Saints, so many times, how many in your life, how many times in your life you paid money for something and then you got that thing you ain't even want it no more? But you paid money for it. Some of y'all, you, 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 you will pay $1,000 for stuff that you're not even going to want 10 days later. It don't even matter to you. And saints... God pay, placed money in your hands so that you can create an experience for him. You, you have made money an experience for you. And that's why you ain't got a lot of it. Oftentimes. The father want to give bountiful money to bountiful givers. That's what he wants to do. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 says that uh, if you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. If you sow bountifully, you're going to reap bountifully. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 dealing with you determining what type of life you're going to live. So if you don't want to live a small life that's broke, in debt, always got to borrow, always looking for a lender, always looking for somebody to help you out. If you want to live a life that is strictly supernatural by God, 
that he's the one supplying you. He's the one increasing you. He's the one imparting grace, wealth to you. He's the one taking your life into the higher levels of power and blessing. If you want that, you have to sow. Everybody gets money. That's the thing about it. Everybody gets money. I found that out, that everybody makes money on the earth somehow, some way. Money gets into everybody's hand, whether it is a housewife, whether it is a child doing chores, whether it is an elderly person, everybody makes money. That's what I found out. I found out that everybody makes money somehow. That's what I found out. I found out that everybody make some type of money in life. But the thing about it is that when people get money, they don't think about the Holy Ghost. Look, it wasn't that the woman at Zarephath didn't have no provision. She had provision. It was just not enough for what she wanted. Remember, she said, this is our last meal. So she has provision. And she has had provision. But now her provision has ran out. And watch this. Even though she's at her last provision, she still does not think about giving it to Elijah. You notice what she said. This is our last meal. I'm going to give it to my son. And then we're going to surely die. Look. This lady does not know about the kingdom system, which is the problem with a lot of believers. Her self-righteousness is I'm going to give my last provision to my child. Oh, she's just a wonderful parent. Look, this, 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 is, this is what she believes is right. She's saying my last provision, I'm going to give it to my, my child. This why I'm going to place it. This why I'm going to sow it. Her last provision. She not saying I'm going to bless God. I'm going to honor God. God is not on her mind. You know who's on her mind? Her and her child. But listen. This was the same mindset that kept her broke in the first place. Because she had her and her children on her mind and that didn't change that the fact that they ended up with no provision in the end. Look, Elijah is showing her. This is the kingdom. Here I am. I'm a prophet of God. God in a body. God is inside of me. Give it to me. You need me. You want to give it to your son. Your son can't deliver you. You want to give it to yourself. Yourself can't deliver you. Give it to me. Give it to a vessel of honor. That's why a lot of people don't live in the kingdom system. Because they don't want to bless their man of God. They want the man of God to bless them. They get blessed off a of word. They don't sow into the word. But you can't see that your man of God spent, whether it be 45 minutes, an hour, two hours, sowing into you. That's the crazy thing. Man, they don't see. Okay, some of y'all, you enjoy Prophet Joshua Holmes. You listen to my teaching. You enjoy me. But you won't sow nothing into me, but I'll sow into you without no problem. See, the mind doesn't think that a man of God should be honored. You go to them churches talking about man of God talking about, oh, uh, oh, uh, I don't even want to say a man of God. Religious man talking about, you know, I don't talk about money. God will provide. Lucifer Jr. can't see that Jesus, Jesus talked about money in the text. Jesus talked about money all throughout the Gospels. Jesus told a parable about money, said one got five talents, one got two talents, one got one talent. Jesus said that they hid the Lord's money. Jesus talked about in Matthew 25, a parable about money. And you imagine sitting on a leader talking about, I don't talk about money, I don't talk. 
So you don't talk about money and Jesus talked about money. Either Jesus is wrong or you, Bishop Don Juan, is wrong. Jesus is at a meeting and he's not looking at who's praying. He's not looking at who's jumping and leaping. He said, look at this woman. She has given out of her lease. That's the book of Luke. He's given, she's given out of her lease. Why, why Jesus stopped the whole service? Why Jesus didn't acknowledge everybody else? They're singing, they're preaching, they're dancing, they're leaping. Their, their scripture memorization. Why he didn't exalt that? What caught his attention was the sacrificial sower. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's still the same thing that catches his eye. He looks for somebody in the earth that will walk in his kingdom system and sow their best provision into him. Some of you are you was built selfish. You, you live selfish. So, so sowing is something that you run from because it has always been about you. Some of y'all don't understand your sinful life that you lived before you called upon Jesus was a life of selfishness. You slept with who you want. You, you, you sopped up who you wanted to sop up. You, you, you hung around who you wanted to hang around. You dukes who you wanted to dukes. You smoked what you wanted to smoke. You traveled where you wanted to travel. You went where you wanted to go. You talked about what you wanted to talk about. You was there and here and everywhere. You was a follower of your own emotions, your own senses, your own ways. And now when you come over to the spirit, you have passed from death to life. You're not the same person that you was normally operating as. And God is saying, this is my kingdom. This is what I have made for you to conform to my image and my likeness. God so loved the world, he ain't have no problem with sowing. Imagine God see you on earth. There's, there's some people, they don't even want to hear about the sea. Oh, I, I, I don't want to hear about the sea. Why, why, why you don't want to hear about giving to God? And then you going to tell me that you're not the devil? How come God gave to you his best? You don't want to hear about giving to God? Saints, if, if, let me talk to you singles on here. And I'm not talking about those of y'all in my mind. I'm talking about viewers that's, that's watching. New time viewers. You up there want to know who a man is? See how much he honor God. If that man don't honor God, he not going to know how to treat you. Because remember, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. What was Jesus? A seed. He was a seed that kept on giving. He was the seed given, but he was the seed that was giving as well. He was a supply system to his wife. So if you want to know who a man is, you, you, you up there, just ask him his son account. Don't ask him how long he prayed. Don't ask him what churches he been to, what he preached, what he went to school for. Ask him how much he, how much he, he, he ask, find out his son account. Because if he not sensitive to not rob God, how he going to be sensitive to not rob you? If God say, bless, bless, bless your wife today, you think he going to bless you? Because he don't even do it with God. You think because you guap guap do a little strange for a piece of change, you think that he gonna exalt you above God, treat you better than he treat God? Think about it. God is the one breathing in him for him to have a body. So no matter what pleasure you give to him, you think that he gonna you think he gonna treat you because listen. If he can't treat the one that gave him the body, 
He sure ain't going to be successful in treating the one that's bringing pleasure to the body. Because number one, the one that even made the body exist is being ignored by him. His heart is stony. You men on here, you should never get with no woman if you ain't finished your sewing account. Because before God let Adam sow his sperm into that woman, Tun Tun, Adam was sowing money into the ground. He was sowing provision into God's garden. God promoted him to a, 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 a sexual sowing. He had to finish submission sewing to get to sexual sewing. You men out there won't have sex, but you don't want to sew. What you don't know that you imparting demonic seed into that woman. Because God wanted you to finish your sewing account, your submission account. You start trying to, uh, uh, you want to up there sew your body and sow your sperm, but you ain't even sow no seed. You rob God. You, 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 you are backwards. God didn't give man sex first. He gave them a seed. So if you go and have sex, you in violation. Adam got promoted to sex. How you ain't sowing no seed and then you act like God promoted you to sex. God didn't even promote the first man to sex and he ain't had no sin. God had him sow his way out there. He gave him a woman. Says it's not good for you to be alone. See, when you sowing, God will give you what, you, what, what brings you satisfaction. See, what you got to catch is Adam sowing made God think about what would bring him pleasure. When you a sower, God look at what brings you pleasure. He looks at what makes you happy and he supplies it to you in due season. Due season is a time where the father is catering to your pleasures.